You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for Columbine, Aquilegia canadensis. Columbine's distinctive red flower indicates one of its alternative common names, red columbine. It's also known as wild columbine. It grows in Central and Eastern North America. During late winter or early spring months, this perennial plant grows new leaves. Most of Columbine's leaves are basal leaves. The compound leaves contain three leaflets. In a mature leaf, the center leaflet has a longer petiolule than the other two leaflets. Each leaflet is deeply lobed. Shortly after the leaves emerge, Columbine starts sending up flower stalks. Each flower stalk has a few leaves along its length. Flower buds grow at the tip of the stalk, as well as from leaf nodes along the stalk. Observe how the leaf along the flower stalk may be a simple leaf rather than a compound leaf. Notice how the simple flower bud is changing its shape. Green sepals cover the developing flower. Spurs grow as a specialized part of the petals and poke upwards between the sepals. The flower bud changes its color to shades of red-green. Little wisps of threads protrude from the bottom of the developing flower, below the sepals and petals. This image shows two phases of flower development, a new bud on the left and an opening flower on the right. The columbine flower opens enough so we can see some of its reproductive parts peeking out. The nectar spurs turn bright red. Observe how the petal spurs grow up between the sepals. Now that the flower has opened fully, we can better see how the red spurs are that specialized portion of the yellow petals. As the flower opens, the styles extend downwards in a tight group. They may look straight, or the styles may curve upwards together. The newest anthers of the stamens are flat yellow discs, until they become fuzzy with pollen. Pollinators, such as hummingbirds, must reach high up within the flower to obtain nectar from the spurs. When they do, pollen clings to their foreheads or bellies and is transferred to the hanging styles with their tiny openings, their stigmas, leading to the flower's ovaries. After the flower has been fertilized, the petals and stamens drop away. It becomes easier to see the ovaries, which had been hidden in the center of the flower. See how the long hanging styles lead up to the ovaries? And how the petals were shaped into spurs at one end? After the sepals, petals, and stamens drop off, what remains is the set of ovaries with their long styles hanging downwards. Gradually, the stalk supporting the fertilized ovaries bends, causing the ovaries to point up. This plant has ovaries pointing down as well as others shifting to an upward position. As the new green follicles, or seed cases, mature, they spread apart. While the first follicles are maturing, other flowers bloom. This columbine flower had six petals and ovaries, so now it has six follicles. Field guides consistently assert that columbine has five petals. However, a plant may have a variation, resulting in six petals. The follicles, whether there are six of them or five of them in a group, turn from green to reddish brown. The styles attractively curl from the ends of the follicles. When wet, the follicles may look translucent, hinting at their dark seeds inside. Eventually, the columbine's follicles dry out and begin to split open. The follicle is the type of seed case which splits along a single line. 
follicles begin to reveal the seeds which have matured. Seeds are a shiny black. Each follicle is filled with a number of seeds. Now that the follicles are brittle, the wind easily shakes them and dislodges seeds for dispersal elsewhere. Later in the summer, as seeds are being shaken and blown about, the columbine's flower stalks also turn brown and stiffen. The leaves look a bit ragged. Columbine may keep a few of its leaves along with the dried flower stalks during winter months. The next spring, New columbine plants grow from some of those previous year's seeds. A quick review through columbine's growth phases. Spring basal leaves return from the perennial plant. Flower stalks grow from the center. Flower buds grow at the top of stalks and at leaf nodes along the stalk. Flowers bloom. Fertilized flowers become seed cases. Seeds mature to be dispersed from their follicles. Leaves wither and stalks become brittle in preparation for winter. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Aquilegia canadensis, also known as columbine. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of columbine, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.